the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And good afternoon and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 4. Here's a look at today's top stories all across the DMV. Greenbelt police still need your help in locating a missing teacher. They held a news conference today to update the public. Our Leonard and Fleming will have the latest on the investigation. Plus, yep. and we've had some showers, but no passing storms, thankfully enough, out there today. The question is, how long do these gray skies hang around? We'll have your forecast in just a bit. And residents in the London Park Tower apartments are breathing a sigh of relief after getting their waters back turned on. They were previously without water for more than two days due to a water main break. And even though the residents may have that water back, the city says they are not out of the woods just yet. And thanks for joining us on this Thursday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Annalisa Gale. We'll get to those top stories in just a few minutes, but first let's check in on our forecast looking outside here in Roslyn. Dry there right now. Yeah, some spotty showers earlier today, but things are looking okay, at least for now. But let's get over to meteorologist Damon Madsen with the first look at our forecast. Damon, how are things looking this afternoon? Well, I think you guys nailed it on the head right there. Yes, we are improving things out there slowly into the evening time, but we're not completely out of the woods yet with this rainfall. Here's the culprit again. It's a warm front that is just situated right over top of the DMV. The bulk of the rainfall moved through earlier this morning. Look at all of that precipitation across the eastern seaboard there, but still we do have a couple of showers hanging about at least until this front totally clears out by tonight and check it out here. Yeah, we had a lull this afternoon with just a couple of light showers popping up here and there. But now here this evening, while we're dry in the district, Southern Maryland, much of Western Maryland, the Eastern Panhandle, all good to go. We are focused in on a couple of heavier downpours, a couple of heads up here for Middleburg over toward Upperville here. A shower that is starting to fall apart, but still some heavier rainfall along Route 50 and then just south of Leesburg moving over toward Dunlin and Ashburn. You're also experiencing a heavier downpour right there, but they're brief and they are moving along pretty quickly and then checking up to the north here just south of Frederick near Ayler and down toward Green Valley on I-270. We have a heavier shower that is moving slowly off to the south and east. So if you're going to be heading out toward Frederick anytime soon, just watch out for that. And there we go. We are talking about the chance of some showers and storms continuing at least for the next couple of hours. But that's it, folks. At about 7 o'clock, we're done with the rainfall. And then as we move into the night tonight, we are going to slowly start to see things clear out as it looks like high pressure moves back in for our Friday. So as we head into the start of the weekend, should we expect any additional storm chances to roll back in? We'll have a check on that and more coming up in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Our top story tonight. Greenbelt police still need your help with searching for this missing French teacher, Miriam Torre Sila. She disappeared on July 29th near her home after a walk in a nearby park that she often visited. Our uh, Leonard and Fleming spoke exclusively with their sister, whom just flew in from the Ivory Coast to help with the search. And Leonard, what is her sister staying this afternoon? Mark and Annalisa, well, Fatih Torre is very, very concerned about her sister Miriam because she's very regimented in what she does every day, and for her to vanish without the trace is just baffling. And police here in Greenbelt are also stumped because they have not had any leads. Police say Miriam was last seen July 29th near her apartment in Greenbelt and across the street from a park that family and friends say she often walked. Greenbelt police have not had any success in tracking what happened to Miriam. Police Chief Richard Bowers held a news conference early today asking for the public's help. Fate Torre spoke, Torre spoke to me exclusively today about her sister's mysterious disappearance without a trace. She is increasingly worried about her, she tells me. I was hope, I, I, I was hope, I don't know how to say that, expected that we will find her, but now we are 10 days. Most days are going on. More, uh, um, I'm afraid to have a bad news. Police, as I mentioned earlier, are still trying to look into this case and still trying to investigate it, but are asking for the public's help. Reporting in Greenbelt, Maryland, Leonard and Fleming, DC News Now, back to you. 
Leonard, and I'm sure her sister has been doing a lot of reflection lately. When last did she speak to her? Annalisa, that's a very good question. She said she spoke to her sister three days before her disappearance uh, via Zoom call. It was a family Zoom call that they had, and that was the last time they spoke. And she said her sister seemed to be in good spirits. Guys? All right, Leonard, thanks so much for that. And just into the newsroom at this hour, D.C. police have found missing three-year-old Mitchell Edwards. He was last seen in the 5200 block of Fitch Street in southeast Washington just around 3 this morning. Police are thanking the public for their help with finding him. And he is safe and sound at this hour. Well, tonight, hundreds of Alexandrians finally have water and air conditioning in their apartments. Residents of the London Park Tower Apartments went without for over two days. Now the question is, how did this happen? Well, Northern Virginia reporter Haley Milan has been working to get answers from city officials and the apartment complex. Property management here says its water main ruptured during a routine fire department test days ago. Now, while the water is restored, the city is advising residents to boil it until the health department deems it safe to drink. Now, for the Bogdanovich family and hundreds of their neighbors here, this week has been filled with heavy lifting. Kind of coming down every so often uh, to fill up jugs from the fire hydrant. Bogdanovich and her neighbors went without running water and air conditioning since early Tuesday morning. It's, it's been an ordeal. Prompting the city to provide drinkable water and water to fill toilets and wash dishes. Residents got creative for the rest. I've actually been going to my local gym to, to shower in the morning. And even as the water's restored, the city's warning residents to boil it. Um, and we will work with the building management um, post event to make sure we understand uh, exactly what happened and what they can Deputy do. Deputy sure City Manager Jan Lambert says the city doesn't inspect water pipes, but the buildings themselves are subject to inspection. The company Virginia American Water supplies the water main owned by London Park Tower Apartments and directed our questions to property management. In a statement to DC News Now, property management called the outage an unexpected and unfortunate complication to a test that has been completed annually for many years. Lambert couldn't say whether residents can pursue rent abatement, but a spokeswoman for the city says she's already getting calls for support and advocacy. Among the concerns of the residents is the cost of their next water bill. They should not receive an excessive bill because of this event. And Lambert says that anyone with consumer concerns should reach out to the city. He says the city will have drinkable water here on site for residents until the health department wraps up its testing, which could take several days. In Alexandria, Haley Mylon, DC News Now. Haley, thank you. New tonight, a Rockville man was transported to the hospital after driving his truck through home. Investigators say the man had multiple traffic violations and they believe the crash was a result of operator error. Emergency responders say a car at the scene was also trapped by live power lines as a result of that accident. It's unclear at this hour if the driver is facing any charges. Also developing now, expect to see more neighbors and police walking the streets together. It's part of a new push by acting police chief Pamela Smith to address rising crime while increasing police visibility. And our Mario Carbone has a recap of one of the latest walkthroughs. I'm tired. I'm tired of looking on my shoulder. For neighbor Monique Wheeler, her ask is simple. She wants to feel safe. Be able to go to store, be able to walk in your own home without somebody knock you upside the head or a bullet flying across your neck or something like that. It's something she says she hasn't felt in years living here in Capitol Hill. They shoot a lot off that bridge over there. She's not alone with that concern. In Ward 6, both homicides and robberies are up compared to last year, and that's according to MPD data. Obviously, any violence is, is of concern to neighbors, but even when there's nobody injured, it's kind of, you know, it's unsettling. Edward Ryder is an ANC commissioner kind of in the area. There have been, um, you know, perceived uptick in shooting events. He welcomes any opportunity to improve public safety. How are you? Wednesday, dozens of officers and neighbors walked in step together. Whoa. It's part of a push by acting police chief Pamela Smith to better identify the issues in each neighborhood, building up the community to address crime as a whole. I think it's great. Um, you know, it, it's it's a good way for the police to engage. Still, Ryder says the it's not the only yeah. answer to driving down violence. The MPD is, is a part of the solution, but there's a lot more that needs to be done from kind of root causes. 
And happening today at 5 p.m., Councilmember Zachary Parker will also host a crime walk in the Brookland neighborhood at the corner of 12th and Newton Streets in Northeast Washington. And a reminder, the D.C. police are looking for this man that you see here on your screen waiting for that photo there. This is the person who they believe may be involved in stealing a car from a 7-Eleven gas station in Northeast Washington yesterday with a two year old child in the back seat. That child was reunited with his family and is safe, but police are still looking for the alleged kidnapper. If you know who this person may be, they're asking that you contact them right away.